the question about coordinates of free nodes. Uh, in fact, uh, I would like first uh, to uh, mention uh, some problems about uh, uh, classical nodes. Uh, я собираюсь рассказать uh, uh, о знаменитой проблеме в uh, классической теории узлов. И в классической теории узлов uh, есть понятие uh, кабардизма узлов. Uh, uh, итак, uh, in classical knot theory, uh, there is a notion of a slice knot. Uh, so what is a slice knot? Um, uh, что такое срезанный узел uh, в классической теории узлов? Uh, well, of course, we know that there is a trivial knot. This is a knot which can be spent by a disk. And we can also imagine that uh, we want to span a knot by a disk, but not in, in uh, the usual Euclidean space, but in one dimension higher. Это означает, что мы хотим заклеить узел диска, но не в R3, а в на одну размерность выше. То есть мы можем предполагать, что у нас есть R4 с плюсом, и вот в этом полупространстве четырехмерном мы стараемся затянуть uh, узел диском. So we are trying to span a knot by a disk in R4 plus in a half space. Actually, this is the same as if we do for the sphere and the ball. So um, we know that usual knot theory in R3 the same as in R S3 and the same about, uh, well, uh, R3 as a boundary of R4 plus and S3 as the boundary of the ball. Uh, now uh, there is uh, the following question. Uh, this question is very important. What sort of a slice disk should we have? Какого рода срезанные, uh, какого рода срезан, срез, такой диск uh, должен быть в четырехмерном пространстве? Uh, actually, uh, we can say, okay, let's take whatever disk. But this um, is not interesting. And in fact, this is not interesting because, um, well, actually, each knot uh, can be kept by a cylinder. Для каждого узла мы можем придумать такой цилиндр. In fact, um, the cylinder can be looked as follows. Um, we just consider a knot in R3 and uh, Mm, uh, we take uh, the center of the ball, and from this ball we uh, take rays to the knot. И поэтому получается, что локально этот цилиндр, конечно, является в каждой точке многообразием. So it's a manifold, and actually this manifold can be nothing else but a disk. So uh, the fact is that um, we should require some local flatness condition. So what does this local flatness mean? Actually, the idea is that um, if we have a locally um, flat knot, this means that um, if we cut um, uh, some small neighborhood of a point uh, in our surface, uh, then the small neighborhood um, small spherical neighborhood will give us a trivial knot in the sphere. So this is the local flatness. So this is one condition. And on the other hand, we can ask for another condition. So um, we can ask for smooth disk. So we have two uh, sliceness conditions, smooth sliceness and locally flat topological sliceness where we require locally flatness. Так что локально плоская бывает срезанность и гладкая. А теперь, пожалуйста, пример. А для любого узла К, если мы возьмем его сумму с а, его а, а, зеркальным образом, то результат получится срезанным. А, so actually we take uh, the connected sum of K and uh, its mirror image and the result will be slice. So here some John tried to draw um, uh, what we do and actually this is the result of certain spinning. In fact, if we uh, try, uh, we can um, make a reflection of a knot uh, at some um, um, plane, at some uh, semi-plane, a uh, half plane uh, in R3. And this reflection can be thought of as a part of rotation in R4 plus. 
uh, so we rotate our knot. And uh, so in R4, uh, it gets like this. Так что каждый узел, если его взять сумму с собой, вот он так будет таким образом срезанным. И на самом деле эта срезанность будет топологической. So this, uh, гладкой. So this is a smooth slice. And now what about topological slice? There is a very beautiful theorem due to Mike Friedman that uh, um, uh, if the Alexander polynomial is one, then actually um, our knot is uh, topologically slice. Uh, this, uh, uh, this work actually, so we can add it to the list of references. So we have, I forgot to input it, but this work is a sort of twin uh, with the um, great paper by Friedman about the smooth point correct conjecture in dimension four. Это в каком-то смысле статья, которая близка к доказательству не гладкой, а именно топологической гипотезы Пуанкаре, и там используется принципиально не гладкая техника. Um, so uh, one more statement is that there is such an invariant called Rasmussen invariant. You can read about that uh, in my book. And uh, so the Rasmussen invariant is an abstraction for sliceness. Actually, if um, uh, its absolute value is greater than zero, then the knot is not smoothly sliced. And actually having these two statements, one and two, uh, we see that one can construct knots with Alexander one and uh, Rasmussen invariant more greater than zero if, mm, uh, so mm, uh, the Rasmussen is not zero, which is, um, uh, will be topologically, but not smoothly sliced. Таким образом, в размерности 4 имеется существенное различие между топологическими поверхностями и гладкими поверхностями. И это очень важно, что топология такая непрерывная и гладкая топология в размерности 4 очень сильно различаются. And now I would like to uh, give a statement which is due to Lisa Picciarillo. And Lisa Picciarillo uh, is just a young uh, postdoc, so she was a sort of assistant student somewhere, and uh, she published a paper uh, that the Conway knot is not slice. And I would say, first of all, this paper was published in Annals, Annals of Mathematics. Moreover, for that paper, she got a professor position. За эту работу ей дали позицию полного профессора. And finally, um, a recent, uh, so I all, I, every day I listen to lectures by Richard Borchertz and Richard Borchertz mentioned, though he's not a not theorist, mentioned Lisa Picciarillo. Uh, Итак, вот есть узел конвея, вот я здесь специально перерисовал его, um, вот этот вот узел, и про этот узел uh, не было известно, является ли он топологически срезанным. Uh, и uh, Borchertz на самом деле ученик конвея. Чем uh, этот узел замечательный? Why is this not beautiful? So first of all, um, first of all, it is topologically slice. Besides, uh, this knot has a Rasmussen invariant, which is uh, zero. Uh, так что вот у него инвариант Rasmussen тривиален. Вот такого реального, вот очевидного, очевидной, uh, очевидного препятствия к нетривиальности нет. Но на самом деле он топологически не является срезанным. Uh, so I suggest you to look at this paper. So if someone wants, it's really a beautiful paper. Uh, and in fact, Lisa introduced some techniques uh, by using four manifolds. And she proved actually more or less that if two manifolds have the same trace, uh, so trace is something for dimensional, then they are either both uh, slice or both non-slice. Так что вот замечательная техника новая, которая привела. So you see, sliceness is a very uh, well, um, a very famous um, uh, pro, um, direction in classical knot theory. And actually, besides sliceness, we can ask about the slice genus. Uh, so when we want to cap something uh, by a disk, sometimes it's impossible. So we can try to ask, maybe we can cap by some other higher genus. And actually it is known that uh, each knot in R3 can be capped by its Zypher surface. So, um, so this means that 
if it can be capped by a Zappert surface in R3, then of course it can be capped by something in R4. Так что если мы можем затянуть узел каким-то какой-то поверхностью с краем в R3, то уж тем более мы можем затянуть его в R4. И, конечно, если у нас имеется поверхность, то мы можем спросить, а какого минимального рода эта поверхность будет? Ну, вот можно разделять род Зейферта. Это в трехмерном пространстве можно смотреть на род топологический, на род гладкий. So we have three uh, types of um, genera in three, three space. So this is Zephyr genus. Uh, of course, this is the maximal one. And also we have topological genus. Uh, and also we have slice genus. So all these three genera exist for each knot. And actually, the, both all these inequalities are strict. Ah, okay. Um, and uh, now, um, um, uh, now um, I want to mention one very important conjecture, a very important conjecture, uh, which is called the Fox conjecture. Uh, Fox is known to be uh, Fox is known to be Milner's teacher. Uh, and actually, where is the Fox conjecture? Okay, I can say it, uh, I can say it. Mm, um, uh, I can uh, uh, say it verbally. Uh, actually, a slice. Uh, um, uh, so there is um, uh, there are slice knots and there are ribbon knots. Так что есть срезанные узлы и есть ленточные узлы. Что такое ленточный узел? What does a ribbon knot mean? Actually, um, uh, if we have a knot. Um, then uh, we can ask, well, okay, um, uh, so possibly the Milner, uh, Milner con Milner's conjecture was here, maybe. Uh, okay, uh, so, um, uh, so let me show another screen. And um, uh, so here it is. Uh, so what do I mean um, by, um, uh, by a ribbon knot? Uh, by ribbon knot, I mean uh, that our knot can be kept by a surface um, so that um, this surface will have only ribbon singularities. So what do I mean by ribbon singularities? I mean that this uh, surface intersects with the self only in the most trivial way. By the most trivial way, I mean only along double, uh, double curves. Uh, so actually, how can one surface intersect with itself if I try to cap it by something. Actually, uh, we can have double lines. Uh, mm, uh, so this is a two surface in four space, right? So we can have double lines. We can also have, uh, mm, we, can uh, we can also have uh, triple points and we can also have, um, uh, we can also have, uh, uh, so uh, John, and where is my 1A? I think it was uh, my sheet 1A where I uh, drew all the, those uh, double lines, triple points. And um, okay, so I can draw it uh, separately. So there are double lines, there are triple points, and there are also Whitney umbrellas. Uh, so uh, typical, uh, typically, oh. excuse um, me, uh, on that. 1A. Uh, yes, it is, it is on the uh, page four, I missed place them. Uh, page so where, four. Is it, where, is, where is that? Uh, By sorry. PDF, page uh, four. Uh, PDF, page four. Let me see. Mm, uh, let me see. Ah, oh, yes, yes, actually, uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, uh, yes. So, so here are the types. Here are the types of intersections. Uh, right? You cannot see. I cannot see oh, you. Okay, screen. okay, 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 okay. Here it is. So here are the types of how surface um, usually intersect. Uh, in free space. Uh, so uh, here are the typical intersections and these typical intersections, they actually appear, um, they actually um, are very useful for creating diagrams of a two knot. And in fact, in fact, we can uh, try to draw such pictures and uh, actually, um, uh, actually ribbon knots are knots uh, which can be um, uh, kept by, uh, which can be kept by um, um, uh, surfaces of genus one with only simplest singularities. 
But uh, let me just refer you to the paper by Fox when this um, appeared. Uh, so uh, after, after that, we will not use uh, this notion anymore. Um, we will not use this notion anymore. And here is the list of references. So here is uh, the beautiful paper by Fox, who, who was uh, the teacher of John Milner. Вот, пожалуйста, замечательная работа Фокса, где он вел свою гипотезу. So uh, actually each um, slice knot is known to be, um, um, uh, so each ribbon knot is slice because ribbonness means that we have some bands uh, and uh, so you can try to create a band and uh, this band somehow intersects itself and it has only band-like singularities. And the conjecture is that each, um, sli each slice is ribbon. And now I want to pass to the main object of our study. Сейчас я перехожу к главному объекту наших исследований, это к свободным узлам. So free knots uh, can be thought of as equivalence classes of framed for valent graphs, modular rider Meister moves. So let me just recall a little bit what sort of graphs we uh, consider and um, actually we just draw uh, graphs um, of valency four. So in each vertex we have uh, some uh, intersection of valency four. So I, now I draw, I'm drawing something planar, okay? And um, uh, um, we um, uh, specify who is opposite the chart vertex. We указываем кто противоположный в каждой вершине. And now I, um, uh, this is a curve with intersections. And I want to declare uh, my knot to be slice if it can be capped by a surface with intersection. This is the most natural definition. Uh, so, um, итак, я хочу определить срезанный узел как узел, который может получиться вот из такого вот, и такой вот поверхностью со складками, чтобы она его заклеивала. Uh, well, uh, in fact, um, uh, this um, actually uh, is not formally related to dimension four. And in fact, we can deal with such things as living on some surface of dimension two, and we can cap them by um, some um, disk with singularities in dimension three. So we can say, okay, um, um, if we want to our not to be slice, we can say, okay, we try to place it in some manifold, uh, in some free manifold with boundary so that the knot leaves inside on the boundary and our disk ins is inside this three manifold with typical singularities. So what do I mean by typical singularities? Exactly those singularities I mentioned before. So this means that uh, my surface will have, um, we'll have uh, typical vertices of the following three types. So uh, actually mm, uh, following four types, I think. So actually, um, if my um, surface is, um, uh, um, uh, so if I have some interior point, then at interior point, at the interior point, uh, so everything can look like that or like that, or like that. So this is uh, just the um, um, regular point. This is just an intersection of two uh, pieces. This is just an intersection of three uh, lines. And this is a, a sort of, uh, um, uh, what is called Whitney umbrella. In fact, so these are all possible singularities which are stable. Uh, вот такие, если мы погружаем поверхность в трехмерное пространство, то именно такие особенности являются стабильными. То есть, если мы чуть-чуть подвинем поверхность, то, в принципе, других особенностей можно не быть. Ну, например, четыре точки в одной плоскости, четыре uh, плоскости в одной точке могут не пересекаться. Но вот три в одной плоскости, от них никуда не денемся. И вот от этого зонтик, зонтика уйти не тоже. So, we can formally define our um, um, folded surface, or uh, I would say two-dimensional free knot with boundary as some, um, as a two complex, which is obtained from a, from a, um, from a, by identifying some points uh, in a disk so that locally everything looks like 
that in neighborhoods of uh, interior points. So when we fold our disk, we can get that. When we intersect, we can get one of that. And on the boundary, so you, it is either just the usual boundary or just uh, uh, the intersection of two points, okay? And now um, I want to know, um, I want to know whether we can uh, somehow um, uh, get some slice knots uh, which are um, uh, which are non-trivial. But first of all, I have to define um, um, I have to define um, uh, the sliceness condition for uh, knots, not just for graphs. Сначала мне надо проверить, что свободный, uh, что вот это понятие срезанности и вообще не только срезанности, но и рода uh, поверхности затягивающей, оно корректно определено для узлов, а не просто для графов. So formally we have to check, and I want to leave it to you as an exercise, that if two uh, framed for graphs are equivalent by uh, some Riedemeister moves, then uh, uh, they are either both slice or both non-slice. So this is just an exercise. You just check Riedemeister one, move one, Riedemeister move two, and Riedemeister move three. There is not, nothing special here. And actually, well, I could have said that for mm, uh, flat knots, when knots live in a certain uh, two sphere, uh, there is um, uh, there was some um, literature by Scott Carter, by um, Kent Orr, and other people. Uh, so there were some sliceness obstructions in terms of homology. Плоских, то есть узлов, живущих в поверхности, на двумерных поверхностях, то есть фактически для кривых, имеется понятие срезанности, и оно выражается в терминах гомологии, то есть есть препятствия. However, flat knots and free knots are not the same, so free knots actually do not reside in many two surfaces. Uh, they do not have right left structure they don't uh, they have only opposite edge structure так что для свободных узлов больше свободы чем для плоских узлов и uh, поэтому мы можем определить genus uh, rod um, uh, genus so genus is defined just uh, as a, a minimal genus of a two surface which spans our um, uh, free knots. So actually, we want to take a two surface and fold it somehow, so uh, so that it has only typical singularities, Whitney umbrellas, and so on. And it's also exercise, actually, the same exercise that if two graphs are equivalent, they then they have the same genus. Of course, uh, genus is the minimal genus, and actually, this is a, a property of a free knot, and not just a free graph. And actually, um, for English speaking people, I would like to say that time shall unfold what plighted cunning hides. So in fact, uh, this is in a certain sense, a motto of today's lecture. Uh, and I want um, to say that um, uh, if we have something which um, can be kept by a disk with, a folding, with foldings, then we can try to cap, uh, uh, do it by using a disk without foldings. Um, так что в каком-то смысле можем сказать следующее. Если можно затянуть граф сферой со складками, то можно это сделать и без складок. Uh, и это будет некоторое утверждение. And today I'm going to uh, um, consider one very simple invariant of this, um, and, uh, but before I pass to that invariant, I want to say about some very um, easy sliceness. So this sliceness is actually some sliceness when we have only double lines, okay? So I assume we can um, cap our disk in a way uh, that um, there are no triple points. Мы можем затянуть наш диск таким образом, что нет тройных точек. Uh, so uh, what else can we have? Well, okay, we can have cusps and we can have double lines, right? Uh, well, okay, we can have, uh, actually double lines can be of two sorts. Uh, they can have, uh, they can be circular, so compact ones, or they can be 
have just uh, from one boundary component to another boundary component, but uh, if they're circular, then um, there is no problem in that because, well, uh, if uh, they are circular, uh, then um, uh, uh, we can just undo them because they have no intersection. There is no problem in just undoing a circular intersection between two pieces of a surface, right? So we can think that all double lines start somewhere and end somewhere, right? And there are some um, um, uh, things which get to cusps. Actually, cusp means some Whitney umbrella but if we look at a double line in the neighborhood of Whitney umbrella, we see that it's somehow paired with itself. Так что мы смотрим на некоторое спаривание. Спаривание и спаривание означает следующее, что что каждые две хорды, все хорды каким-то образом спариваются. Каждая спаривается либо сама с собой. Это в случае, когда здесь возникает такой вот, ну, такой в зоне либо она спаривается um, с другой хорд. Uh, so all chords are paired either with themselves, um, so this is for chords corresponding to cusps, or they are paired um, with some other chords. So actually a pairing means the following. So we um, um, uh, split the total set of chords, or maybe chord ends, into two sets, and uh, when we do that, um, uh, in, in two sets, excuse me, of um, uh, cardinality two or one, so that um, for uh, uh, single, uh, singular sets, um, we just leave a chord as it was. So like here, this may name a chord, and for the other chords, we just mm, pair their ends in another way in order that uh, they do not intersect. So they could have some inter intersection potentially, but they then we pair them in a way so that they do not intersect. So there are three ways and exactly one of them is non-intersecting. Um, and if um, uh, we have a chance to do that so that there are no intersections at all, uh, then uh, mm, uh, this means that we have a simple pairing. So for example, if we have just um, uh, one chord which is paired with itself, we can, um, we can just um, create a Whitney umbrella like that. And if we have two chords, say A and B, we just connect one end point to, of A to one end point of B and the other end point of A to another point of B. And as I drew here, maybe not very nicely so that we have two branches uh, here near A and two branches here near B, and we will have some double lines uh, so that uh, locally one branch near A is connected to something near B and the other branch is connected to something near B. Uh, and actually, uh, so this is a sort of criteria of sliceness without triple point. Uh, and я хочу назвать такую срезанность элементарной. So this is an elementary sliceness. So somehow we can also, for ele elementary sliceness, require that we don't have cusps either. Um, but here I want to give you an example, um, an example uh, which is not a slice. And actually, um, actually this example, uh, so, so far we can only say that it is not slice elementarily. Uh, so um, what do I mean? Maybe I can redraw it separately um, on another screen. Uh, so I just uh, draw um, five chords. Uh, I just draw a chord diagram with five chords and yet more five chords. Uh, so I want all chords to be odd. So, so far all these chords are even, right? So uh, they all intersect each other. And now I want to uh, add some small chords of valency one, right? One, two, three, four, five. And actually uh, mm, uh, it's an exercise for you as a homework. So you can check that these chords cannot be paired, uh, cannot be paired with, uh, 
So anyway, we try to pair these chords, we will not succeed in creating a collection of non-intersecting chords. Well, in fact, in fact, if we try to get uh, some non-intersecting chords from some intersecting chords, so what does it mean? Actually, so if we have this chord, say A and A prime, and we want to uh, uh, somehow change the pairing like this, and uh, we really want this A and A prime uh, to have no intersection with say B and B prime, for example. So these are B and B prime, and we want to change the pairing like this. Uh, so this actually means that the total intersection of A plus A prime with the total intersection of B plus B prime is even. So here, for example, we have four intersection points. But if we had something, for example, like this, so, well, I don't know. So these are A's and these are B's and we have one intersection point in total between A's and B's, then whatever way we pair them, there will be no chance to uh, have uh, zero intersection points until we change the pairing. Okay, so and now my goal is, um, my goal is uh, to, uh, to say the following. Uh, actually, uh, this diagram is not uh, elementarily sliced and uh, this is actually the matter of just a combinatorial check. And uh, there will be some main theorem formulated today and not completely proved uh, today. And uh, the theorem is, uh, if a diagram is completely odd, then it is, then if it is slice, it will be elementarily slice. So this is a theorem. Uh, this is a joint theorem in my work with Denis Fedaseev. And this theorem follows from one very important lemma, and it will appear in the end of today's talk. Both the lemma and the way of getting a theorem. Actually, here is um, Zbornik mathematics. So a criterion, a sliceness criterion for uh, odd free knots. And actually, the first is also Zbornik mathematics parity and cobordisms of free knots. The first paper of mine is 2012 and the uh, second is 2019. Okay, so we have two papers here. And и так мы имеем вот эти две статьи. И в общем, на самом деле имеется нечто такое довольно впечатляющее, потому что если мы хотим проверить, можно ли как-то затянуть узел, то просто так проверить это довольно сложно, потому что могут быть какие-то каспы и тройные точки, их может быть сколько угодно. So we can have lots of, uh, we can have lots of uh, uh, intersections of whatever sort, and actually it's hard to, uh, uh, to check uh, whatever possibilities because there can be thin, um, too many of them. But uh, it's not hard to check all possible pairings. At least, well, of course, of course, if we have n quartz, it will be something like two to the n, but potentially it's finite. Potentially it's finite. And this theorem means that if something um, is true, then it's true with some very uh, nice conditions. Uh, but before passing to the proof of that theorem, um, and uh, well, to the idea of the proof of that theorem, I want to give a, a, an easy invariant. Перед тем, как я перейду к, к, к вот этой теореме, которую мы доказали с Федосеевым, я хочу определить один очень простой целочисленно значимый вариант L. А на самом деле я этот вариант обсуждал на докладе в среду. Uh, I discussed it at my talk at the seminar. Um, so please watch this talk. This invariant was discussed just as an invariant of free nodes. But actually, this is a sliceness invariant. So what do we do? Uh, I want to consider the following group. Uh, this group has three generators, A, B, and B prime, and very easy relations. So A squared equals one, B squared equals one, B, square, B uh, prime squared equals one, and A, B equals B prime A. Actually, we can get rid of B prime at all, and we get Z2, uh, star Z2. So this will be the following group. So for me, it would be more convenient to stay with B prime. 
а для меня будет удобно работать, когда b штрих есть. И вот граф Келли этой группы. Мы рисуем две линии. Здесь на одной мы рисуем b, b штрих, который чередуется. Конечно, здесь должен быть штрих. Um, so here should be some prime. And there are vertical segments which are marked by a. So this is the Kelly graph. Of course, we don't care about h direction uh, because um, square f of each generator equals one. And now uh, I want to associate uh, some word um, um, with a chord diagram. Я хочу поставить некоторое слово хордовой диаграмме. So, uh, well, uh, in order to consider chord diagrams, it would be more convenient for me to consider chord diagrams of long free knots. And uh, in order to do that, I want to um, uh, take a point in a um, free knot and pull, uh, cut it and pull it away, pull the two ends um, to the infinity. Я разрезаю гауссовую диаграмму в одной точке и концы развожу на бесконечность. So now I go along this free knot, I take whatever orientation actually, This invariant will be defined as an integer number up to plus or minus sign. Invariant L будет определен с точностью до знака плюс и минус, поэтому мне не очень важно, в каком я направлении иду. Итак, я иду по хордовой диаграмме и читаю концы хорда. И хорды у меня бывают четные и нечетные. There are even chords and odd chords. Even means uh, it intersects evenly many chords. Odd means it intersects oddly many chords. Right, and um, actually, if I consider um, uh, even chords, I want to associate A, but if I consider uh, to both ends of this chord, but if I consider an odd chord, I want to do either B or B prime, depending on the following. In fact, in fact, uh, my chord, uh, uh, so here, um, even chords are red and odd chords are uh, blue, Uh, my chords, um, if, they are, if a chord is odd, then it can intersect evenly many even chords or oddly many even chords. В первом случае я пишу B, во втором я пишу B штрих. So in the first case I write B, in the second case I write B prime. So for example, for such a knot, I get B, A, B, A, B prime. So well, quite a complicated word. But if, but if we look at the group, we have here, this word will be nothing but b, b prime to the four. Uh, well, actually, uh, it's easy to see that it will be b, b prime to something because this word will have uh, oddly many, uh, evenly many a, будет четное количество букв а, поэтому мы переходим снизу вверх четное число раз, так что мы останемся на нижней линии. Ну и мы легко проверить, что будет четное число B. Ну тоже, у дороги идет два конца. Um, so, uh, we will have B to uh, B, B prime to some power. Actually, this uh, power is divisible by two. And my conjecture that this divisible by four. For example, uh, here, from here, we have B, B prime to the four of this knot. And actually, this means that mm, This means that this number uh, is non-zero. Well, uh, in my course on just knot theory, or um, in my in my lecture, uh, I said that this uh, that this invariant of the group is invariant under right modes. Я uh, можно проверить непосредственно, что это этот элемент группы является инвариантом длинного свободного узла относительно движения Райдемайстера. Here the knot should be long. Uh, well, actually, if I have a, uh, if I uh, have a compact free knot, if I have a compact free knot, uh, then I can conjugate the word. I can get a cyclic word, and this uh, uh, this length between two points uh, can switch. So actually, eight can become minus eight. So b and b prime are conjugate. And if I um, change the base point, so I can get, uh, well, instead of B, B prime to four, uh, to the four, I can get B prime B to the four, which is the inverse element. So actually here I get eight or minus eight. And my statement is that this number, 
um, this integer number itself is an, an invariant uh, of cobordisms of free nodes. Uh, and in fact, this was uh, the very first uh, invariant of cobordisms of free nodes because um, actually before myself, uh, nobody knew that free nodes are non-trivial. Это был самый первый вариант кабардизма в свободном кузлу, потому что даже если говорить о простых, если просто говорить о свободных узлах, то моя работа была первой, где было доказано, что они не тривиальны. And cabardism are, of course, a much more uh, subtle relations than just, uh, than just um, equivalence. And in fact, uh, if we want to say, okay, this free knot is non-trivial because it's odd and irreducible. We can say the same for, um, for sliceness because we can take K plus K bar and this is slice, okay? So we can have a slice knots of whatever complexity. So we, have sh we should have something more subtle. And we должны иметь что-то более такое, чем просто вот нечетные и неприводимые свободные узлы. So now I can give you one more invariant, uh, one more invariant uh, uh, of, of free nodes, uh, which I discussed in detail at my talk um, on Wednesday for uh, Moscow, Beijing, or in St. Petersburg. Uh, this invariant is valued in a non-commutative group. Invariant, на самом деле, я не буду даже его определять, я Просто скажу, что есть инвариант в группе, где я вообще говоря забыл, что b в квадрате равно единице, я забыл, что b в штрих в квадрате равно единице, поэтому я вот ввел такие соотношения, где есть минус первая степень. А чем эта группа отличается? So I consider just this presentation of some group, and actually what's the main difference between the two groups G I defined before and G prime I can define here? So the main difference is that the main difference is that this group has exponential growth. So that group can be drawn on a plane. This is just a sheet of paper. And actually, if we want to write down a word of length n, um, then there are not so many words of such length, right? Uh, and here, if we try to draw all words of length 100, the number of such words grows exponentially. And, um, so in order to do that, we will need um, the Lobachevsky plane. And actually, uh, we can try, try to draw a small piece and we will need so many laps growing everywhere. Эта группа, она имеет экспоненциальный рост. So actually, I proved that there, uh, there was an invariant of um, free knots valued in uh, such a more complicated group. And it is still um, a research problem uh, to understand whether uh, we can get invariants of um, sliceness. Uh, до сих пор довольно интересно, можем ли мы из этого um, uh, сделать инвариант, um, который бы давал препятствие к срезанности. I'm pretty sure that yes. And uh, actually, I want to get in an invariant of cobordism of free knots. Я хочу получить инвариант кобордизм в свободных узлов. Well, actually, let's return to our integer valued invariant and let's try to um, figure out why it is an invariant of cobordisms. Um, uh, which uh, actually, uh, what do I mean by a cobordism between free nodes? Что я имею в виду под кобордизм между свободными узлами? Well, um, okay, I can consider a free knot here. So, for example, k on the top and K prime on the bottom. And actually I want to place them by a cylinder with uh, um, uh, just simple singularities. And typical singularities or simple singularities are just double lines, triple points and cusps. Cusps mean with umbrellas. Uh, so actually I want to cap something by a cylinder, right? And it's more or less the same as doing, uh, uh, as capping K uh, plus k bar by keeping um, uh, k plus k bar uh, by a disk because here we can just uh, connect k to k bar somehow and so uh, then uh, the cylinder um, will become a disk and actually now there will be three ideas of 
proof of that theorems. And actually you can restore the full proof or read, read my paper. And actually in my paper, um, uh, in my paper, um, the idea was going in a much more complicated way. In fact, first I wanted to define this L invariant to be an invariant varied valued in groups. Так что в моей первой работе по кабардизму свободных узлов я строил вариант, который имел значение в группах. И я очень хотел получить некоммутативную группу. Но на самом деле эта группа G, которая там получилась, она почти что коммутативная. То есть в ней есть коммутативная подгруппа конечного индекса. И это на самом деле, ну, фактически инвариант оказался не более чем целочисленным. Но вот совсем недавно я обнаружил, как можно усилить эту вещь, в общем, более-менее комбинаторно алгебраическими методами, и понял, что группы-то бывают более сложными. А инвариант можно определить просто как некоторый хитрый подсчет. So this invariant L can be uh, considered just as a smart count of double points. In fact, the idea is as follows. So we just look at double points, and uh, we, if we have double points, we can call them B, uh, and B prime, right? Uh, but uh, you see here, uh, you see here, uh, if I go B, uh, then here I go to the right, and here I go to the left, right? So, so this means that B can go to the right or to the left, and B prime can also go to the right and to the left. Uh, but that ver depends very heavily on where I am. Uh, in fact, after I go to the right, after that, the next B should go to the left. Uh, so in some sense, I can uh, make some count with respect to the position of the core. Я могу строить подсчет с учетом положения хорды. То есть я могу считать B как плюс единицу, если это B там на нечетной позиции, и как минус единицу, если B на четной позиции. А для B штрих наоборот. So I can count Bs to be even or odd. Uh, to be plus or minus, and for B prime, I can consider odd or even to be plus or minus, okay? And so this means that I can get some count of Bs and B primes, and actually this count turns out to be um, very good for two surfaces. And why is it good for two surfaces? Because actually the first idea is that the parity can be defined on, the, on a two surface. So what does this idea mean? Что означает идея, что четность определяется геометрически на двумерной поверхности? So assume we have a chord of a Gauss diagram, which is just sex, say, three chords. So this means that when we consider this double point and go along this half, uh, we, have, we will have three intersections, only many intersections. Uh, uh, but we can go not just this way, but we can go inside the disk and the number of intersections will stay odd. So it's obvious. So if we have oddly many intersections, then uh, we homotop our curve inside the disk and it cannot become even. So some curve, uh, so some intersections can get canceled, but they can cancel in pairs. So odd thing cannot become even. So that's why we can distinguish between A and B. And one more subtle step is how to distinguish between B and B prime. It's not hard. Uh, so actually, the second idea is that B and B prime can be also defined geometrically. And the final idea is that, well, just signs are uh, preserved. Actually, what does that mean? That if we have uh, some B prime, which is counted as plus on the top, uh, then it should be counted as plus on the bottom. Well, it can be B prime here, and then it can become B prime B here, but the sign will be the same. And this can be uh, accurately, uh, so you can read uh, these accurate things in my paper or even in our book, uh, Invariants and Pictures. And in fact, much before that, uh, there was some account of, say, um, uh, there, were, there were some invariants of cobordism of virtual knots where people counted some other signs, for example, right numbers of odd points. Так что вот, например, Люди считали разные инварианты кабардизмов для виртуальных узлов, но там были другие вещи, за которые можно зацепиться, например, коэффициент закрученности. 
but uh, three nodes don't have any right numbers. So, um, but there is still uh, some way of defining signs. And uh, here um, I want to emphasize that once we have something odd, then we can count something mod Z2. And when we have some count mod Z2, we can get some more clever count to get some very fancy groups. By fancy group, I mean at, I mean at least this group because it contains a free group of infinite rank, for example. Это the group уже очень сложная, но пока что еще не доказано, что есть инварианты кабардизма со значениями в этой группе. So far, I haven't got cabardism uh, invariance failure in G prime, only with this invariant L. And I think uh, this knot is not sliced because here we have eight and non-zero. И этот свободный узел не является срезанным, потому что здесь мы имеем восемь, а не ноль. Actually, uh, uh, this L um, is an invariant of sliceness, uh, for, um, is an invariant of, may, uh, is an, um, an obstruction not only to sliceness, but uh, to some um, more complicated things as follows. We can try to cap our knot by a surface of a certain genus. Uh, and if we try to cap by a knot or by a surface of a certain genus, then there will be double lines. Если мы затягиваем наш узел поверхностью какого-то рода больше нуля, то там будут двойные линии. Well, and in fact, there is something unpleasant here that uh, if our surface is not a disk, then not all paths are homotopic. And uh, if so, uh, then the number of double lines uh, that we want to define, well, is not well defined. Um, however, uh, there is some class of surfaces um, which are called checkerboard. Please look at my paper in Sporting Mathematics. Однако есть такие вот поверхности со складками, которые называются шахматными поверхностями, поверхностями с шахматной раскраской. Uh, and uh, these surfaces are such that when we traverse whatever non-trivial homotopy class, uh, the number of intersections will be even. And uh, this means that if we do that, then the number of, um, the number of uh, uh, intersections from one, um, from one point to another will not depend on the path. And actually, uh, uh, this will uh, give rise to um, a way to define A and a way to define B. And this will say that our L is an obstruction to this checkerboard um, sliceness of whatever genes. Так что вот если мы будем рассматривать только шахматные поверхности, то вот если это L не ноль, то, конечно, срезанного рода не будет. Uh, вообще никакого. Uh, but of course, but of course, uh, in, if we don't deal with checkerboard surface, we can uh, just separate all crossings uh, just to make an intersection like that and then recouple them somehow uh, to um, just by two, for example. Uh, and uh, so this will give uh, some very non-economical way of uh, um, uh, of slicing this um, by a surface of higher genes. Um, well, unfortunately, this invariant L mm, um, cannot do mm, cannot do much. К сожалению, этот инвариант L не может практически ничего сказать про рот связанности. So we can uh, say that it is an obstruction of genus G zero, but we cannot say anything of genus one unless we want, we have something checkerboard. Так что если поверхность не является шахматной, то, к сожалению, проблемы, и мы не можем никак оценить род, что вот он больше единицы или больше двух. Well, because A and B are not well defined, if uh, this is not checkerboard, we don't know whether something will be even or odd. And this is a research problem. So how to, uh, how to arrange the L invariant for higher genus surfaces. So far, we don't have good um, uh, thing for any, uh, uh, for estimating the genus from below. 
And actually, uh, one possible uh, answer to that question could be a Havana homology and Rasmussen invariant. But to do that, uh, there is a very well defined, uh, there is a very nice research problem. And this research problem is as follows how to define the Havana homology for three knots? Uh, and actually, the problem is that we don't know where the differential acts. We can define, for example, the Havana homology by just splitting at uh, even crossings. Мы можем определить гомологию Хованова, просто разводя четные перекрестки и строя обычный куб Хованова, но мы не знаем, в каком, какой перекресток будет, так сказать, А, а какой будет А в минус первый. So we don't know who will be um, the zero state, A state, and which one will be um, the A to the minus one state or one state. So that's the problem. And in fact, if we can define the Havana homology, then the Rasmussen invariant will give us something. Uh, so I hope uh, that this is yet another research problem. Еще одна проблема для исследования. Пожалуйста, давайте поработаем с гомологиями Хованова, попытаемся определить гомологии Хованова для свободных узлов. Oh, well, and now I want to pass to our work with Fedoseev. Well, I will formulate the result. I have already. Um, so here is what is bad in that method. Uh, so um, here I just mentioned. So uh, so um, actually, first of all, nothing works if all crossings are even. К сожалению, наш Элен вариант всегда тривиален, если все перекрестки четные. By the way, uh, the Элен variant is also trivial when all crossings are odd. One can see that they they will be. Mm, uh, well, they're all odd, so this means that no even, uh, so evenly many even because, uh, so they will be all B and no B prime at all. Uh, well, uh, so how can we do anything for all odd? So can we, um, can we somehow design our um, uh, L invariant for uh, all odd diagrams? I don't know. Я не знаю, можно ли как-нибудь переформатировать мой вариант L, чтобы он работал для диаграмм со всеми uh, нечетными перекрестками. Но со всеми то четными точно ничего не получается. И, к сожалению, нет uh, очевидной оценки для рода. Well, actually, uh, what's, what can the problem be if we try to estimate the genus? So, for example, uh, we can have eight here, right? So, I assume we have eight here, and we want to split this eight into, for example, four and four. So we have some four on this surface and some four on that surface. And then we can spin uh, uh, this a little bit, rotate a little bit, and four becomes minus four. And then four and minus four um, uh, um, add up to zero. Так что вот получается, что четыре минус четыре складывается. And actually, this is, this is a sort of problem why we can need uh, non-commutative, non-abelian groups. Um, если у нас группа не коммутативная, то вопрос, насколько частей можно разрезать слово, чтобы потом из него склеить uh, слово другое, uh, ну, в общем, это вопрос довольно интересный, и там будут коммутаторные длины. So if we deal with the group G prime, if we know what to do, but then we will have very nice problems, something like commutator length. And actually, actually if we want to have something non-commutative, well, our invariant is not completely non-commutative. Actually, here I want to emphasize the problem, highlight the problem that mm, um, whenever we have, um, um, we have cobordism, it's much more subtle than just invariants of isotopy. Because, for example, assume we have some, um, assume we have some words, say, A, B, C, A to the minus one, B to the minus one, C, D, C to the minus one, C to the minus one. Допустим, мы имеем такую вещь. Тогда мы можем uh, это дело просто разложить по полочкам, раз, раз, разбить вот это слово на кусочки, а потом снова спарить. Конечно, для этого потребуется поверхность большого рода за большим количеством ручек. Но потенциально это всегда сделать можно. Поэтому, если мы хотим сказать, что два узла в каком-то смысле как кабардантны, и мы не можем проследить, чтобы окружность всегда была одна, то вот эта некоммутативность, она теряется. Но зато род кабардантности может проследить в некоммутативном случае. Вот это вот большая проблема для исследования. Так что вот здесь а и а минус первый сокращается. Хорошо? 
Uh, so, and now I want to pass to our work with Fedosev. Mm, actually, here I want to mention the Fox conjecture again. So here it's written finally. Uh, so um, uh, actually, uh, the fact that ribbon guys are sliced, there is no problem because ribbonness means a special sort of sliceness. But otherwise, there is a problem. So actually, actually, ribbon knots can be thought of as follows. So we consider uh, we consider a disk. A disk in R three can be thought of as a long ribbon, right? And now we want to immerse this disk uh, as follows. So, so we start immersing this long ribbon uh, so that it can intersect itself, but only by going inside itself. So it ha can have just uh, some segments of self intersections, but no foldings, no triple points, nothing else but this. And if we have intersections in R3, then when we raise to R4, there will be no problem. We can raise it to R4 and okay. And uh, so we make one coordinate higher and the other lower. So this is a, a way of slicing this in R4. And of course, so this is the conjecture that uh, slice knots are ribbon knots. And uh, actually, uh, this problem is very much related to the problem with elementary cobordism. So we can ask about just cobordism when we have just double lines and cobordism when we have just um, double lines, triple points, and cusps. So we can have elementary cobordism and not elementary cobordism. And now we have defined some parity before. And um, here I want to argue that if we want to um, if we want to slice something by a disk, then the parity satisfies the following property. Я сейчас хочу сказать, что если мы определяем четность вот для двойных линий так, как это было раньше, а, то есть мы берем а, а, от одной точки на двойной линии идем к другой точке на двойной линии и смотрим на количество перекрестков, то а, выполняется следующее. Во-первых, в каспах будет ноль, а, извиняюсь, будет четная, двойные линии, которые подходят к каспам, будут четные, а во-вторых, если мы имеем тройную точку, то сумма четности будет ноль. So, uh, for cusps, uh, the, uh, we will have uh, uh, parity zero, and for triple points, we will have, uh, uh, we will have actually three lines, and the sum of parities of these three lines will be zero mod two. Well, in fact, here we just go from here to here and there will be no intersections. And here we just look at three angles and count everything mod two. Actually, uh, well, uh, well, uh, well, in fact, it's easy to check that it will be, uh, it will be even. So uh, now my idea is, uh, my idea is that, mm, uh, um, uh, so here is an elementary coordinate, you already saw it. And um, uh, the idea is as follows. Um, uh, actually, if we have uh, some, um, if we have something, uh, if we have some slicing disk, uh, then this slicing disk can be somehow undone. So we can, um, uh, uh, so we can undo all even lines. So here is the F lemma in honor of Fedosev. Вот, пожалуйста, лемма Федосеева, которая состоит в следующем что если у нас имеется диаграмма а, D а, свободного двумерного узла с краем, а, и то а, можно фактически устроить диаграмму такого же узла, а, ну, а, а, без, а, 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 рода, рода ноль, so what am I saying, so let me, let me just look at this, paper again. Uh, so, so this is the F lemma, uh, just a moment. So this is the F lemma. So um, let me just look the, at the exact formulation of the F lemma here in my, uh, uh, just, so just a moment. Mm. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, Cobordisms of free knots. So here I'm going to show, uh, here I'm going to show our paper with Fedosev. Just a moment, I will share my uh, share another screen of mine. Uh, so this other uh, screen will be 
here. All right, so here is, here is our paper. And uh, uh, here we have lots of pictures. It's in Russian, but um, you can find um, in, uh, the English one, uh, Russian and English on one side. And um, actually um, uh, the F lemma, uh, well, very, um, uh, very roughly, this means that uh, we can undo double lines. Uh, very roughly, this means that we can undo double lines. And in fact, this lemma is achieved by a sort of, uh, by a sort of smoothing. So we have a sort of um, Kaufman, so here we have some Rosman moves. Uh, um, we have something like uh, Kaufman brackets. Um, uh, we have a sort of Kaufman bracket smoothing for um, um, just curves, for just usual knots. And uh, now I want to, um, I want to um, uh, formulate uh, uh, this uh, uh, just a moment, uh, um, uh, just a moment. So this, um, yeah, for each diagram D of a three um, um, of a um, um, folded um, of a standard folded uh, surface, two-dimensional knot having boundary, uh, having some boundary K, which is a frame for graph, uh, there will be some smoothing of that, some smoothing along some double lines, um, uh, which has, um, which has, um, uh, which coincides with D and has no um, interior double lines. Uh, but um, what is crucial is that we can, um, uh, we can decrease, um, um, uh, um, we can decrease it somehow to get uh, to get a trivial three knot. Um, uh, well, uh, actually, this lemma this lemma is more complicated because I have to define a trivial three knot by using Rosman moves, and this will be more complicated. Uh, but uh, instead of saying uh, about this lemma, I want to formulate the main theorem. So the main theorem. So. Uh, which I'm uh, not going to prove um, today is as follows. Основная теорема говорит следующее. Если оснащенный четырехвалентный граф является нечетным и является срезанным, то он является срезанным посредством спаривания без пересечений, то есть элементарно срезанным. Uh, uh, и на самом деле uh, там не будет каспа тоже. Actually, is a if a frame for graph is uh, uh, totally odd, all chords are odd, and if it is sliced, then it's sliced by pairings without intersections, elementary slice. So mm, actually in mm, more detail, uh, this means that, mm, um, in more detail, this means that um, uh, we don't have uh, uh, triple points um, and we don't have cusps. Why? Well, um, actually, let's look at double lines, and uh, let's look at um, let's look at uh, these um, uh, double lines from the point of view of parity, right? Uh, so uh, we know that uh, for double lines which originate from some crossing, we have some parity, and if some crossing attaches some uh, cusp, uh, then uh, it's even. And if three uh, and if three double uh, if some double lines attaches a cusp, it's even. And if three double lines meet at a crossing, then it cannot ha happen that all three are odd. Так что в случае, если три встречаются в одном перекрестке, то не может быть, что все три нечетные. So the only possibility we can have is just double lines. And actually, this is this main theorem is proved. Uh, by using some, uh, by using some uh, unfolding techniques, um, and actually these unfolding techniques, we don't understand it in full generality. So we prove that main theorem that there is some lemma which allows one uh, allows us to unfold and to get something like a trivial knot or whatever whatever it means. But um, uh, later on, I want to to give you some problems. And actually, I don't know what is a bracket for two knots. 
Я не знаю, что такое скобка для двумерных узлов. Actually, you know that for just usual, uh, usual uh, knots, we can have a sort of Carlton brackets. Right, we can smooth a crossing like this, and we can smooth a crossing like this. And actually, if we consider um, uh, three knots, we can have um, uh, odd crossings, which are not smoothed at all. Так что нечетные перекрестки можно вообще не разводить и получить что-то такого рода. Well, and if we have a double line, then we can have such a smoothing like this. So here I haven't finished drawing, so we should have we should finish the drawing, Sandra, later on. Um, and actually, we can get this surface or this intersection. But what to do in the case of um, a triple intersection point? Я совершенно не понимаю. Actually, I did not use it for I did not uh, use it to, for the proof of the main theorem. So I just said that there is some something. Но я не понимаю, какие бывают скобки для двумерных узлов. So here I want to cite um, a poem by Tu Hu. Now this poem is called Bajan Tu. Uh, this is more or less uh, Mm, uh, the plan of eight uh, positions. Вот по-русски есть замечательный перевод uh, план восьми расположений. Uh, что это значит? What does it mean? This means that we have a certain checkerboard uh, surface, eight by eight, and we should have uh, uh, something like figures on that surface. And in ancient time, some uh, general of Chinese army uh, you uh, created this eight by eight uh, figure to um, uh, solve some problems and to conquer uh, over here and, and to win over his enemy. And actually, this is a very beautiful picture. Um, so why am I interested in that? Um, actually, the question is, assume I have a triple point and assume I want to undo everything. And what does it mean everything? Well, actually, I have a uh, mm, six edges, six semi-edges outgoing from here, six. And six actually means three plus three. So this means that if I uh, consider this um, here uh, three um, on one side and here three on the other side, I will have that. Or I can draw it, I can draw it alternate. Um, um, so an alternative picture can be like that. I have a cobordism actually, this is a trivial cobord, this is just an isotopy. Uh, this is just an isotopy, which corresponds to the third Reidemeister move. So I assume I have a third Reidemeister move. So upstairs, I have this. And downstairs, I have that. Oh, excuse me. So I have three uh, double points. And here, they meet at a triple point. And uh, here, locally, I have exactly uh, the picture I drew before. So we have intersection, an intersection point between three planes. But what to do? So here I can I can have eight possibilities of small things like this, like that. So uh, two uh, to the three is eight. So here I have eight possibilities, and here I have eight possibilities, and I should couple them somehow. Well, if, if I had something odd, so I would have, uh, for example, two odd things and one even thing. I could easily imagine that I, I take uh, that this remains intact and this undergoes something like that. So, so then I can really imagine. But I don't have enough imagination. So, if you can define the calf, you can define such pictures. So, possibly you will be able to define something like cobordisms. And uh, um, so, why is it needed? Для чего нужно вообще? уметь разводить такие двумерные поверхности и рисовать такие картинки. Да нужно это для того, чтобы уметь строить инварианты скобка от К равна К. Well, and now here I have uh, just eight by eight pictures because two to three equals eight. So I have eight before and eight after, right? Um, so, um, I, uh, so really I have a problem that the bracket of K equals K. Uh, so I want to smooth the surface in some way to get the initial surface. But I don't understand what a smoothing uh, at this crossing is. Я не понимаю, как разводить такой перекресток в целом. 
То есть то, что я умею делать для самопересекающихся кривых, я не умею делать для поверхности. Если бы умел, то, возможно, я бы определил скопку Кауфун для двумерных объектов и скопку учетности, и, возможно, я бы уже определил там, разные варианты двумерных поверхностей со значением двумерных поверхностей. So here is the list of, here is the list of problems. So first of all, um, uh, so, uh, so problems, so uh, we're in exercises. Uh, well, actually, actually, okay. Uh, well, as for exercises, I mentioned them before. Uh, so for exercises, I mentioned them. So uh, please, first of all, try to, um, uh, try to look at the um, uh, uh, knot I drew. I mean, uh, this knot with five, um, let me see, with five um, intersections, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with 10 chords. And these 10 chords have, uh, 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 and these 10 chords are all odd. And please try to figure out why it's not possible to pair. Okay, so this is an exercise, right? Uh, one more ex uh, one more uh, thing um, you can do is uh, try to um, uh, try to understand better um, how to restore B and B prime uh, by using just geometry. Okay, and now problems. Uh, problems. Uh, try to find an approach to sliceness for completely even knots. Попробуйте придумать что-нибудь, если все перекрестки четные. Я ничего не знаю для срезанности узлов. Well, uh, the next question is try to find an approach for estimating the slice genus for free knots. Я не умею оценивать рот, если он не равен нулю. Uh, вот. И самая главная uh, задача, которую я всем предлагаю сделать, это попробовать построить вариант типа скобки четности. So the main problem is try to construct the uh, bracket type invariant where we could potentially have something like bracket of k equals k. Попробуйте uh, построить такой инвариант, чтобы были значения в двумерных узлах. You have something valued in two dimensional nodes. Actually, I had a paper with Will Ru Bill Rushworth, and this paper had some pictures for two knots, but these pictures were one dimensional. Мы имели некоторую работу с Рашвортом, и но там все было, картинки были, но они были одномерные, а я хочу двумерные. Uh, ну и вот как оценивать рот. Um, so one more problem is how to estimate the uh, genus of classical knots by using uh, the free knots techniques. Um, in fact, what we are now doing with St. John and Sarah, so we are applying a free knot approach to invariants of classical knots, links, and so on. And of course, the next step can be to do something for cobordisms. А мы можем, когда это все аккуратно напишем для цилиндра, мы сможем оценивать уже кабардизм с помощью четности. И, конечно, есть старая добрая гипотеза Фокса. And of course, there is this Fox conjecture. And plus one more unsolved problem is that try to define the Hovanov complex for free knots. The problem is that the problem is that uh, I don't know who is uh, the A state and who, uh, who is the A to the minus one state from the point of view of the Kaufman bracket and uh, who is, um, or maybe who is zero state and who is one state. Okay, and here is um, uh, the, list of, uh, the list of references. Of course, we mentioned this book and here, um, as far as I remember, uh, we um, yeah, reinterpret this invariant from the point, um, this L invariant as just a number. Насколько я помню, в книге мы рассматриваем L invariant сразу как число. Well, and here are my pioneering works in um, Spornik mathematics. So here, uh, my first work and my work with Fedosiev. Uh, here is the reference to Fox and here uh, Lisa Picciarillo. Um, okay, uh, so I think uh, here I would like to stop. So please unmute your microphones and start asking questions. So first of all, I would like to hear. Okay. I have one question. Yes, please. Uh, actually, uh, if uh, if 
the disk which bound the knot has only ribbon singularity, then it has no cusp and no triple points, right? Yes, yes. Then, and but uh, but the reverse is also true. I mean, if it has no uh, triple points and no cusp, then it is reborn. Can we say it like that? Uh, um, I think so. Well, we have to check. We have to double check. And uh, and actually, one more um, thing we can mention in the list of references. I hope you were uh, taking notes. Um, is the paper. Uh, by Oleg Stirental. Mm, there is a very beautiful paper, yes, замечательная работа по доказательству Yoshikawa. And actually, uh, for, uh, this work is about uh, uh, the fact that Yoshikawa moves are sufficient for uh, diagrams of two knots. And the idea is how to push uh, all problems uh, outside the boundary. Actually, we are trying to do something. Uh, between uh, two trivial knots, and actually, we may not cap them by мы можем иметь два тривиальных узла, и мы можем не заклеивать их дисками и более-менее попытаться вытолкнуть все тройные точки за предел. И вот таким образом, so in fact, Sternthal has a sort of um, uh, perforation. Он в каком-то смысле делает что-то вроде надрезания какого-то, которое убивает тройные точки. So in some sense, Cherental has a sort of deleting triple points. So this can be thought of as a sort of nice projection. I would be very happy to know. Я бы очень хотел это понять. Mm -hmm. Ну, лучше понять, я имею в виду. Yeah. understand better. So please, more questions. Yeah. Actually, I need some more explanation about the sign conversation. Actually, uh, you talk about some, give some sign for the line for coverage between two free knots. Actually, you said about the idea three. Uh, actually, 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 you know, there are something like sort and um, type and sort. Actually, um, we can just um, um, and uh, one thing is good for writing down a word, and the other one is good for uh, understanding the direction. And in fact, when we pass through a triple point, B, uh, as far as I remember, B switches to B prime. So more or less, more or less, um, the uh, idea is that um, we know what is odd and what is even, and then starting from some initial point, uh, we go along some path and uh, not only see that something is even, but also count uh, how, many, um, how many odd or even uh, things we have uh, traversed. И если мы прошли столько-то раз, so if we have passed evenly many even times or oddly many, so we can restore, we can restore B and B prime. So just check all possible moves and you will see that something does not change along the line. So if it doesn't change it, it goes from the top to the bottom. And if it goes from the bottom to the bottom, then uh, there is some matter of, well, some orientation. So. Uh, plus uh, cancelled with minus, so something like that. Uh, so this is written in my paper. So uh, so mm -hmm. then, uh, if we have such a curve, then in one point it is plus, in the other point it is minus. Okay, then you mean these signs just up to the orientation for top? Well, top uh, well, of course we have to. Of course we have uh, to. Mm, uh, look at the orientation of the knot. So uh, we should say, okay, this is clockwise or this is counterclockwise. So which is the right half, which is the left half. So there is some orientation matter. So I put it under the carpet because I have only 90 minutes. I can approve all theorems in details. But look at my paper in Zbornik or look at our book. So please, um, more, more questions. Yeah, 
к сожалению, не обладаю таким знанием, чтобы задавать какие-то содержательные вопросы, поэтому мне просто неудобно признавать, что я не понимаю на уровне определений то, о чем говорится здесь. Тут очень много топологических определений, которые я еще ну, не успел ну, Давайте, скажите что-нибудь. Вот, ну, граф Келли, например, вы упоминали. Uh, well, the Kelly, uh, граф Келли – это очень простая вещь. Это из алгебры. Мы пытаемся нарисовать группу, мы пытаемся сказать, вот единица. Вот мы имеем образующую А, вот мы идем из единицы, попадаем в А, вот мы идем из единицы, попадаем в Б. Дальше мы умножаем на Б. То есть просто ребра, они соответствуют образующим. И если, допустим, есть А, Б – равно b штрих а это означает что у нас есть такой квадратик как говорят коммутативный квадрат а b равно b штрих а а если например а квадрат равно единице значит что вот мы это как а сюда и по оттуда это как в той статье кличко то есть вот или нет именно, или именно да в точности в точности exactly so the Kelly graph so you Просто... can ask some John you can ask some John and you can also ask him Sarah so я успел ask... посмотреть лекции и прочитать Кличко. Я вот честно скажу, в первой второй лекции я понял, я понял, потому что э, в статье Кличко ну, все подробно изложено. Посмотрев лекцию, mm -hmm. э, я, в принципе, понимал, о чем идет речь. Но вот третье и четвертое мне уже сложно вникать. Это в... Мне приходится а, вот, пожалуйста, э, постоянно смотреть. Полный... Мы найдем с вами время поговорить. Подготовьте полный список вопросов по третьей и что-нибудь по четвертой. А, то есть, если мне постоянно... То есть по, на уровне определения ничего страшного, что мне придется задавать вопросы? А, ничего страшного, все, все в порядке. Вы будете по ходу дела учить и группы, и топологию. Но на самом деле фактически это речь идет о картинках. То есть мы рисуем четырехвалентные графы. So we draw four valent graphs. So now I introduce Pavel. Uh, so Sarah, Pavel is my new student. So, so he's first year undergraduate student. So that's why uh, he's a bit... Um, well, so he has to learn algebra, he has to learn topology, so he has lots of questions. Uh, so, and Sarah is my co-author from Korea. Well, she doesn't speak Russian, uh, so, uh, but uh, you can ask, you can ask her also, um, well, Sanjon is in Moscow and Sarah is in Korea. Okay. okay. English questions, yeah. Yeah, so, so please, well, maybe not now because it's late night in Korea now. I, I uh, understand. But, uh, but, but please, but please call, uh, uh, create a whole list of questions about lecture three and we will find um, an appropriate time. Вот and я составлю, да, составлю список и напишу вам по поводу Да, этого. да, все нормально. Вот, но только надо до следующей пятницы сделать, ну, скажем, два две итерации, чтобы поговорить, чтобы три-четыре вы уже понимали. Если не со мной, то с Сан-Джоном. Сан -Джон, если что, поговорите с Павлом по поводу лекции три и И если что, по поводу лекции я могу заглядывать в книгу и варианты картинки, там все конечно, это есть. Конечно, конечно, да? все есть. Ага. Да. Причем в гораздо Хорошо. больших деталях, потому что я же не могу за полтора часа доказать все. Книжки, ну, да, ну все доказано. Да. И еще в статье, Спасибо. пожалуйста, so my papers in сборник mathematics, so you can read, just they are in Russian. So there is no problem. Okay. Спасибо. Да, пожалуйста. So I think, I think this is the best time to stop, maybe. So good night, and uh, uh, so thank you very much for coming.